Roy, what's this? Well, we're showing how to use a source of energy that's 93 million miles away. You might think of this as a, a nuclear station for producing electricity that's the world's most efficient. And what we're going to do is to take the rays of solar energy from a fusion reactor, which is our sun, and concentrate that radiant energy right here in this small area, which is then a hydrogen heater. Inside this is hydrogen that's heated rapidly. And then it is also cooled rapidly. So we're showing the ability of hydrogen to rapidly be heated and cooled as it operates as an expansive medium on a piston that's within this uh, cylinder to then power an output. That output can be a refrigeration unit, it can be a generator, but this holds the world's record for converting solar energy in an amount that's no more than what we've taken out of the shadowed area from the bright area put that amount of energy right in this zone where we're heating hydrogen intermittently. Now, wait, this is, most people know this as a Stirling engine. Well, they would know it as a, a Stirling engine and or... They're going to be confused about the mention of hydrogen and what we need to emphasize in here, this is not producing hydrogen here. This is using, most people don't understand that hydrogen has a phenomenal ability to conduct heat. Does just by that. pure chemistry. And of course, it's if you're wondering why you can see this better, it's because a cloud just went in front of the sun. That's right. So when the cloud passes, we'll be uh, heating at full uh, capacity. But what we're doing in the meantime is just showing how to uh, heat hydrogen with whatever solar is available, expand it, and then cool it on these fins at a rate that makes a cycle. Wait, now we're still partly, we're still partly cloudy. That's right. We're still partly cloudy, and yet this is running. Oh yeah, we're showing how to, again, use this much collector on a concentrated basis to deliver hydrogen, the heat amount that's required for running this engine without combustion. It's just a heat exchange basis. This again is a very cost effective way to convert energy where there's available direct sunlight from solar energy to electricity. So we can we can take this unit right here and we can hook this up to a generator and make electricity That's right. the same way we're making hydrogen over here and running it through a fuel cell. That's true. This would be the input to this electrolyzer, what then becomes 200 times more efficient than trying to reproduce a hydrocarbon as a replacement for fossil fuel. But this is many times more efficient than these little PV panels right here. It is. This is probably it. And on the best of this and the best of this, three or four times more efficient. And you're looking at the inventory of what would be a hubcap. Right. This is the inventory of what would be the material for making a modern hubcap on a uh, SUV. Now, again, this Sterling is a demonstrator model. It's a demonstrator model. Its actual model. horsepower output is milliwatts. But milliwatts, at 30 feet long. diameter, you'd be producing in the neighborhood of 30 kW. So a 30 foot diameter dish is going to make about 30 kilowatts of electricity. D depending on the uh, cloud cover in the location. But not in production yet. But not in production, that's right. A lot of people this, needs be, right. this needs to be moved from a prototype into mass production. We need 10 million of these a year to support the development of a thousand new millionaires a week, probably twice a week, forever, to produce the energy that's needed. Yep. You know, that's a key point that is rarely mentioned, that there's enough energy falling on our heads to make one or two thousand new millionaires in the United States every, every week. week. And people wonder why I named my book Sunshine to Dollars. Of course.